Hello and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. Today we are going to do an August reading wrap up. I've talked to you about most of the books I read in August. I just have a few more to share with you, but just to do a quick rundown of the ones we've already talked about. Uh, I read Things I Don't Want to Know by Deborah Levy, which is the first in a so far three part uh, living autobiography series by her. I read The Shell Seekers, uh, talked quite a bit about that, really enjoyed it. I read Daisy Darker, and then there were none, which is Agatha Christie's masterpiece. I then read another Agatha Christie, The Clocks. And then I talked to you about The Change. And let me just say, if you are between like the ages of, you know, 45 and 55, and you're not a sensitive reader, if you're a sensitive reader, skip the change. Um, and you're in the mood for kind of a fun book, but also it's also a dark book. It's a little cheesy at times, but it's kind of a wild ride when all is said and done. <laughs> read the change. So I have three books now to discuss that we haven't talked about before. So I read Lisa Joel's latest book, The Family Remains. This is what they are marketing as a standalone sequel to The Family Upstairs. I started The Family Upstairs, I don't know, probably when it came out several years ago. And for whatever reason, I couldn't get into it. And I completely forgot about it. I never went back to it. And so I, I saw another booktuber who I always enjoy her videos and she five starred The Family Remains. And she had not, if I understand correctly, I don't think she read The Family Upstairs. I didn't have that experience with The Family Remains. So having not read, but just a little, of the first book. I very much felt this was a sequel. And I mean, it's supposed to be a mystery thriller. And yes, there is a mystery. I would not call it a thriller. There is a mystery because we start off with a dead body um, being found or, or the remains, I should say, the bones of a dead body. Um, but I felt like when all was said and done, it really was probably for fans of the first book to get more of those characters that they had been reading about and even more closure. So I still gave it three stars. I mean, even though I didn't know all the ins and outs, I knew the premise of the first book, so that helped a bit. Um, so I didn't know all the ins and outs of these characters. I still enjoyed it, but I really think that marketing is is incorrect. It definitely is a sequel in my opinion. So. But like I said, the other booktuber five starred it and I'm pretty sure she did not read the first one. So um, that was The Family Remains by Lisa Joel. Then I listened to an audiobook on Scrib, Do I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. So she was a child TV star on iCarly, which was on Nickelodeon. I never had seen it. I'm not familiar with the show, but I knew this book was getting a lot of buzz. It was free to listen to on Scribd. I listened to it in one day because I had a lot of chores that day. And so I think it was a six hour audiobook. And like I said, we all have different experiences and she certainly did. Um, of course, it's more complicated than just what the title allows, but she, you know, a lot of difficult topics are discussed in this book. Um, abuse, eating disorders, harassment. Um, I mean, you get things from a child actor's perspective and the pitfalls of that. But I mean, at the heart of the book is the uh, the relationship we had she had with her mother who was extremely controlling, actually encouraged her daughter's eating disorder. It's complicated and it, um, uh, I just, the, the book really impressed me. I always feel weird writing memoirs, so I didn't on Goodreads, but I was very glad that I listened to her story. I think it's good that her story is out there and uh, it, just if if you enjoy memoirs, uh, I felt like this one was very, very good. And again, I listened to it and she, Je Jeanette does, uh, she does the audio for it. And then the last book I finished uh, that we haven't talked about yet is I finished 
Hermione Lee's epic biography on Virginia Woolf. So I talked about this, I think in the last video, like you really gotta want to read this biography, either because you love biographies and or you love Virginia Woolf and preferably both, because this is, you know, this is a doorstopper. And I've mentioned before, sorry, I'm repeating myself, but I have a point here. I mentioned before that this, uh, this inspired Heather Clark to write her doorstopper um, biography on Sylvia Plath. But the reading experiences are very different. This is much more dense. They both contain so much information. And that is because they're, even though their lives were shorter, short, relatively speaking, especially Plath's, I mean, Virginia Woolf lived to 59, but, um, they left behind so much material to create the bi biographies from. And this is, of course, um, extremely well-researched and comprehensive. And like I said, I had these ideas about Virginia Woolf. I don't know where I just, you know, I just kind of got them from the atmosphere, I guess, just things you hear that were not really very accurate. And, and then I think, you know, of course, between Plath and Woolf, you know, there's some obvious similarities. They both died of suicide. They both were married to literary men, um, but their lives could not be more different. They are so not, you know, they're of course of a different generation. And that's something with this biography. Um, the sun just started shining. So I'm sure the lighting on this video just changed dramatically. But um, Wolf, I mean, she was a child of the Victoria, you know, the end Victorian time. And her parents works, of course, Victorian. And so she ends up being this modernist writer but she has lived between that time, those those eras between Victorian and the modernist. And I found that all just fascinating. Um, Wolf is a very complex character. I felt like I understood Sylvia Plath a lot better than I understood Virginia Woolf. I've been dreaming about her. And it's not necessarily, it's not as if she's alive in my dream. It's more like I'm talking to someone who knows something about Virginia Woolf or is telling us, she just makes her way into the topic of my dreams. But again, if you want to just dig into a very comprehensive, long biography because you love those things, then of course, but if not, uh, you, you might be better served reading Virginia Woolf's own diaries. If you're interested in Woolf, but you're like, I really don't want to read a 755 page bio. I, 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 I would like to get my hands on her diaries and, and read um, from that. But a lot is quoted in here from her diaries, from her fiction. There's just uh, so much material that Hermione Lee had to work with. And apparently, uh, Leo at a little book life, I think on either in the comments here on YouTube or on Instagram, she's working on um, another biography of another female writer. I also have Hermione Lee's bio on um, Edith Wharton. So I will be reading that someday. And it's also rather chunky. So um, so I finished that. What I'm currently reading, I just started last night, and it is um, Fiona Davis's The Lions of Fifth Avenue. And you know, after, after the heft and the depth and um, of reading this, and I should say this is not like an easy, like it is not an easy read. The way Heather Clark wrote, was very fluid, right? Uh, the way Hermione Lee wrote, like I had to be on my game. Um, uh, it, it doesn't, it didn't for me, I mean, she writes wonderfully. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying you don't breeze through her writing like you, you may with other um, uh, writers. So after that, it's, it's good to just, you know, this is, I think it came out in 2020. Uh, it's just contemporary fiction, which I don't read a ton of other than the mystery thrillers. Uh, so I, I'm super happy to just kind of like decompress with Fiona Davis and the Lions of Fifth Avenue. When I started reading it last night, I'm like, yeah, 
this is this is what I need in my life right now. So that catches us up for yet another monthly reading wrap up. And I hope to see you guys again very soon. Bye.